Hello, and welcome back to the Building with AppSheet series. I'm Google Developer Advocate Christian Schalk, and in this episode, we will build on what we started with the Tasks demo application from prior episodes by introducing common ways to work with data in AppSheet using slices and workflows. So in this episode, I'll extend the Tasks demo application by adding the following. I'll first show how to create a slice and configure it to show only my tasks that haven't been completed yet. I'll then introduce a workflow rule to automatically send an email to the task owner as a new task is created. Before jumping into the demo though, here are a few more details on slices and workflows. AppSheet slices allow you to filter data from a source table down to a subset of rows, columns, and actions. They're useful when you need to show a customized slice of data in an application. For example, when you want to only show rows that match a user's email as needed for a custom My Tasks view. Building slices is easy in AppSheet, as the slices editor pane allows for their quick construction and immediate testing, all without requiring any code or knowledge of structured query language. AppSheet workflows allow you to define automated behaviors when data is changed. The workflow action specifies what the workflow does and can perform either a data change operation, such as adding a row or updating a cell, or an external communication using a variety of methods including email, SMS, mobile notifications, and even webhook calls to third-party services. Now that we've covered some more basic AppSheet concepts, let's return to our tasks demo and extend it further with slices and workflows. So to show slices and workflows in action, we'll return to our task demo application from prior episodes and we'll see that we have our two tables, tasks and owners that are now related via references and the UI is seamlessly linked together. So as you can see, I can click on a particular owner and I can see their respective tasks. So everything looks correct. The application is functioning perfectly fine. Uh, but now let's go ahead and introduce a new slice that will allow me to filter some of the data results that I see. So in this case, when I click on tasks, um, when I look at the task view, I see all the tasks. Um, but I'm going to introduce a slice that will allow me to filter the tasks to only the task owner. And also I'll filter out the non-complete or the basically filter out any tasks that have already been completed, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, I click on the slices tab here and that's under the, the main data tab. And I can click on new slice. Incidentally, I could also select some of these other time saving options, but in this case, I'll just create a new slice from scratch. And I'll call this slice my tasks. I'll base it off of that same source table and I'll set up the row filter condition. Incidentally, there are other options where the, the columns or the actions where I can specify to go along with this slice, but in this case, I'll go ahead and accept the defaults. So I don't necessarily need to override or change anything here. So for the task slice, I'm gonna have a row filter condition that will allow me to specify that I only want the tasks that belong to the current user. And so I do this by adding this one little check here that says, oh, the owner column has to equal to the same currently uh, logged in user. And that just matches their user email. So I click save. And I can click on the, the larger save operation here. And so you'll notice I still see all the slices. So how do I make it so I actually see the change? So in this case, I'm actually looking at the main tasks view. And that's the one that I need to re plug into the slices data. So in this case, I'll open up the tasks view. As you can see, first off for this data, it means which table or slice to display. I just changed that now to my tasks. Uh, I can also update the title here or the name. So it's going to be my tasks from here on. So there we go. Now we can see our updated UI. It now has the, um, once it syncs, let's give it a second. It now has the my tasks name. And it also has just specifically my task. And I can verify this by going over back to the source spreadsheet. So if I see the source spreadsheet, I see specifically three records here, which all match up with what we're looking at in the actual application, right? Now for the second thing that I want to do is I want to restrict it further. I want to make it so that the non-complete tasks only show. So anything that's complete, I don't need to show that, right? So to do that, let's go back to the the slice definition. So I go back into slices and then we have my task slice and I'm going to update the row filter condition. So for this one, I'm going to introduce an and function, which will allow us to evaluate two expressions together. And for this one, we just need to set the status 
to not equal complete. And I close that off. And so now we have like a, an AND function, which puts together the two expressions in, in one shot and evaluates it together. So I'll click save. And then I'll also go ahead and hit save here. And once everything synchronizes, we should see that complete task disappear. And there we go, it's no longer there. So in just a few steps, I was able to create a slice that you know gave us like our, our desired behavior to filter down to only my tasks and only my tasks that have yet to be completed. All right, so let's move on to workflows. Now for workflows, that allows us to change the app such that it will also send an email to a new task owner. So to do that, let's click on the behavior tab here and under behavior, you'll see that there's a workflow section here. So I click on workflow. Now I could create a brand new workflow rule from scratch, uh, but in this case, I'm actually gonna use this option to add email automations for records and tasks. And that's essentially what we need to do. We just wanna automate essentially, or set up the uh, email to be triggered off of any record changes or additions to tasks. So I'll click on the option and it gave me two options here, or it gave me two workflows or two tasks that is. And so I don't need to act on any change values here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one but I will keep the, the on additions to tasks. So I'll leave that as is. And I can even say notify task owner. And then I can just kind of walk through some of the options here. So the target date is still tasks, update event, ads only. So that's what we want to do. If this is true, that's just another evaluation to see if there's any kind of other thing we want to double check. And then finally, here's the actual action that we want. In this case, it's already built for me a ready to run action. I just need to customize it, right? So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the uh, the two and I'm gonna insert an expression. And the expression will simply be the, the uh, owner's email. So again, I can just go owner and I could use just the owner by itself from a tasks table perspective, or I can dereference it from the actual owner's table. So in this case, I can say owner dot email. And so this is a very helpful tool if you're wondering how to reference fields from related tables. So that all evaluates to correct. Um, let's update the workflow action uh, name while we're at it. So let's go ahead and say send email to task owner. If I could type it. And incidentally, you'll see that I have all these other options, notify, SMS, webhook, change data so far. I could select those, but for now I'm going to keep it only to use email. And then now it's just a matter of updating the email subject and body. So I'll just change this to say, attention, you have a new task. And maybe I'll just copy that and put it into the body as well. So I'll open up the body a bit more for more room to work with. And I can delete out some of the stuff that I don't need. I'll just leave this because it was auto-generated for me, but it is using the right way to reference uh, with those extra brackets around the uh, column names. And so I'll just leave that as is. And I'm going to add another bit of text here. So I'm actually going to add the link to the application and I want to point it directly to the tasks view, the, my tasks view that is. So to do that, let me click save and I'm going to open up my task uh, UX view. And I open that up and under the my tasks view, there is a behavior option here and it actually has the link, a direct link to the view. So I'm just going to copy that. Then I'll switch back to the, um, the workflow rule. And so here's our workflow rule. Um, I can open up the do this portion, send email to task owner and go back to the, uh, the actual email body. And I just paste that link directly into there. And so that's it. I should have a fully functioning uh, application that will notify the task owners uh, that they have a new task. Um, incidentally, since this app is not deployed, the email is actually only gonna go to the current app owner, but once you deploy it, it will actually look that up and dereference it and send the email appropriately, All right? So I'll click save. And now we're good to go. We should be able to, for example, start from the owner's point of view, click on a particular user, add a new record. So in this case, maybe I'll say finish demo, maybe give it a priority one. 
and then I'll say it's already in progress. I'll leave the default owner, but I could also override it if I wanted to, but I'll leave it as default and I'll click save. So now that's synchronizing back to the spreadsheet. So let's take a look to see if we have our actually our new record uh, in the spreadsheet. So there we go. We have the new record as it appeared. And then we also have a new email that came in. And so don't, don't worry about the upper part here, but basically we can see we have the, the information on the particular task and there's the task actual name. And then we have that link that we pulled over from the UX view. So we click on that. That opens like a full screen view of the uh, my tasks view and it just so happens to be in this particular card the finished demo part then i open that up and i can actually change it so i can say complete and i'll hit save and if i go back to the original spreadsheet i should be able to see the in progress switch over to a complete in about a second or two and there we go it's now complete this concludes the Slices and Workflow demo for the Working with Data in AppSheet episode. For more info on AppSheet, Google Cloud, and Google Workspace, check out these links in the description below. And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. As always, thanks for watching.